Well, folks, with me here today is John Barclow. Thanks for being here, John. Thanks for the invite, Randy. John is the, I'm, I call him the mad scientist <laughs> over here at Sitka. And he's so generous with his information. And if I say this incorrectly, you spent, what, 20, 25 26. years? 26 yeah. years? Mm -hmm. And you taught, like, the high-end operators in the military, equipment and clothing systems. Yeah. So I'm not going to let an accountant talk about <laughs> this. We're, we're going to have the benefit of all of John's experience, him knowing this, him being a fanatic hunter. I, I sat, here's what spawned this, John. You and I were <clears throat> at this thing. I was teaching some stuff, and then you came in and taught this. Yeah. About your, what, seven or eight? Eight layers. Eight yeah. layer, eight, eight basics. Piece, eight piece. Eight piece system yeah. for everything, anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. And I looked at, I was watching you, I'm like, why haven't I ever made it that easy? I overcomplicate this stuff. Well, that, like, I, like I told you, I think we as in, in a, a technical apparel industry have probably made it a little more complicated. And, and just to, because I think it's important for folks to understand where the information's coming from. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned 26 years in the military. I was very fortunate to be on a team that, you know, after 9-11, we realized we needed to upgrade all of our equipment to go into the mountains because everybody had thought, oh, desert, jungle, it seemed right. intuitive. And then and Afghanistan's so, 8, so 17,000 feet. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very high, it's very cold. We had to figure this out. And the guys, honestly, that first winter, even going into the second, didn't have a lot of gear okay. to properly do it. And also, they didn't have the knowledge, right? And so when you think about it, like, when you go out there in that, in that environment, if you're hunting or in a military operation or whatever the case may be, um, you're exposed to those elements no matter what. I mean, yep. that's part of the appeal, right? <laughs> so the intent is how do you protect yourself? And the reality is that human beings, since the first caveman put on a loincloth, <laughs> has been using gear to protect themselves from the elements, right? right? To the point of we can climb Mount Everest, or even putting an astronaut in space to do a spacewalk, yeah. clothing allows us to do that. So I was really fortunate to have access to the best designers and developers and the, the apparel industry and all the technology. And we built, I was telling you, we built the first technical clothing system for the military, which was eight layers and 24 pieces. And wow. even in a very structured, um, you know, schoolhouse environment, it was still very difficult with classroom and, and um, applying that in the field to kind of communicate this idea. And then I realized after doing this for 30 some years now and, and being in the hunting industry that, you know, if I said, hey, Randy, we got 20 minutes to pack yeah. and go elk hunt right now in your mind, you're, you're already going through what, what you need. Yeah, yeah, my kit. Your kit. And yeah. so I realized, I'm like, okay, well, let me, let me go back and, because I keep gearless, and let me go back and look what I did. And I'm like, well, geez, like the, 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 the type of product may change. Like, oh, it's a new updated style, or, you know, I'm trying, testing something, trying something different, or, you know, we're, I'm going to wear somebody else's brand, whatever the case may be. I realized that I was really taking out somewhere between seven and eight pieces of gear. Mm -hmm. And those seven or eight pieces, I'm probably wearing, depending on the weather, three or four of them at right. any given time. And so then I said, well, what, what do I wear for uh, whitetail hunting, right? So I did this for Western Big Game and, and maybe going out and backcountry skiing. What am I wearing for whitetail hunting? And then what do I wear when I waterfowl hunt? And the yeah. reality was I came back to like somewhere between seven to nine pieces, depending on the environment, the activity. And I'm like, well, this is really an eight piece clothing system. Yeah. And so that's, that's kind of what I've been talking about because I think when you talk about it that way, you're like eight layers, no, eight pieces. pieces. It's very intuitive and I think I can break this down now to where I hope people understand that no matter what brand you choose to wear or what activity you're going to do, the one thing that doesn't change is the human and how humans either cool down or heat up or stay dry and how we protect ourselves from those elements. And when you can stay out there, you know, if you and I go elk hunting yep. and you and I can stay out there and weather that storm and be there on the tail end of that storm moving out and everybody got flushed out of the mountains but us, we're gonna have some incredible hunting yeah. on the backside of that storm oftentimes, right? Yeah. So it's about enduring those elements to be able to do that. And at the end of the day, clothing allows us that, that uh, performance. Yeah, well, I wanted our audience to see this because we get a ton of questions. What do I need for this? What do I need for that? I'm gonna go do this. Should I 
and I don't care what brand it is. It's no, it doesn't. It, it doesn't apply. matter. It's completely agnostic a brand. So, it's kind of like each of these are categories. <laughs> They're categories. And you decide what is appropriate for that activity level and condition. Yep. And then that's all you need. Yeah, it's so, all you need. And and so there's a couple things in there. People think that. You know, oh, I'm a whitetail hunter in, in Ohio. I'll use the home state I grew up in. I'm a whitetail yep. hunter in Ohio. I want to go on my first elk hunt. Do I have to put everything aside for my whitetail hunt and buy everything new to go out there? And I'm like, not necessarily when you break it down into the individual parts. Yeah. You can leverage some of the things you use to whitetail hunt and take them out west. And yeah, you'll probably need to add a few things, but there's a lot of synergy because all these layers, no matter which style or brand we choose is all serving the exact same purpose. purpose. You know, if you're going to whitetail hunt, maybe you want something a little quieter. If you're going to waterfowl hunt, maybe you want something a little more durable. But, you know, rain gear's rain gear. Yeah. Or a puffy jacket is a puffy jacket. Yeah. It's just, you know, how you, what, what your personal preference is there. Um, and so I think it's real intuitive. And I've actually brought a lot more, but I wanted to give a couple options to people and mm -hmm. just talk through it because the the ability to specialize or to personalize maybe i should say every one of these um, is absolutely on the table so as an example if i like a synthetic insulated piece and you're more of a down person i like to say there's really no right or wrong mm -hmm. there's really no right or wrong it's like what you think will work for you but understand that you know that jacket and it the purpose it serves that's the most important takeaway right. here and then it's up to you to kind of figure it out and personalize it for yourself yeah because I think people want to argue about things like synthetic or down or this yeah. or that. Oh, trust me, I get it a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I will not argue. Yeah. I will not argue because it's opinion. When really it's, here's this category or this product class to serve this purpose. And whether you want, you know, yeah. camo or solid, exactly. down or synthetic, it's what purpose does this piece serve yeah. in, your, in your entire system. Yeah, you so. could be a backpacker. You could be a fly fisherman going to catch steelhead up in Canada. Mm -hmm. The clothing system is a clothing system. Like I said, the one thing that doesn't change is the human. The weather changes, so we want to build something that's got some versatility and the ability to adapt to changing conditions. But you know, we're 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 giving up heat right now to the to the air, yep. right? And if if we all of a sudden get cold. So if this takes seven hours, right, and the sun starts to set and it gets cold, we're going to want to put something on to begin to slow that heat as it radiates away. Yep. And that allows us to warm up. That doesn't change. Right. That doesn't change by activity, right? We as a human still continue to operate the way we we're built. Yeah. Well, let's start with this. I want people to, I've always seen you kind of say, well, Moisture management is a really important part, and that starts right here on the surface with base layers. So, is it best we just start? Yeah, and work yeah, our way through yeah, for sure. Let's let's build the foundation of the house or the clothing system, and then and then kind of go from there. Okay. Um, in, in your mind, I want you to think about this system for the Western elk hunter. Perfect. That's well. That, that's, I mean, elk it's on our mind. Yeah. It's on our mind right it now. Starts pretty soon. Quite frankly, so. I feel like uh, you know the. Little John in uh, second grade um, in the fall getting ready to go on a camping trip. <laughs> and that's all I can think about. I can barely yeah. sit in my seat and pay attention, right? Yeah, and they wonder why we flunked <laughs> yeah, exactly. reading or writing that ex day. Ex ex exactly. Um, yeah. So, yeah, let's start with base layer. So base layer or another term would be next to skin. So this is a layer that goes directly next to your skin. Yeah. The, the entire intent of that layer is just simply to manage moisture on your skin. And it, it does it, well, it doesn't do it two ways, but it serves two purposes. So in hot weather, we're gonna go elk hunt or mule deer hunt, or I'm gonna go you know, antelope hunt. Yeah, just, if I just have a base layer on, yeah. it's gonna pull that moisture off my skin, and again, it's gonna evaporate, and as it evaporates, it's gonna take heat with it. Yep. So it's the ability to cool me down. Mm -hmm. It can also provide protection, sun protection, right. has cam camouflage, whatever the case may be. But the entire intent is to sit there, be the foundation, move that moisture. In a cold weather environment, you don't change the base layer. The base layer stays a very lightweight base layer. But now as it moves that moisture off my skin to the other secondary, third, fourth layer I'm wearing, mm -hmm. as long as my skin is dry and that heat is trapped, the clothing, modern clothing manages the moisture. Now I stay comfortable, I stay warm. 
So the base layer is a foundation of the clothing system and anything you put on top of a quality base layer is going to make everything else function better. Okay. And so the, I only have one rule, so to speak, and the only one rule, and it's the, the, this is the place I see most people make the, the mistake, is that they say, well, I really want to spend my money on a pair of pants and a jacket, which is great. Mm -hmm. They should. But if you put it on top of cotton, right, a cotton yeah. t-shirt, right. fruit of looms, yeah. it's not going to work. It may work in a hot environment. It is absolutely not going to work in a cold environment. And that money you invested in that clothing system is going to be wasted because cotton traps moisture, doesn't dry, you're going to get chilled, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So um, the choice you have here, because you have lots of choices to personalize, like I said, but the choice here is you can either use wool, yep. some people love wool, mm -hmm. or you can use synthetic. Yep. I like to say it's shooter's choice, right? Because <laughs> okay. it really doesn't matter. Synthetic is probably going to be a little less expensive, maybe a little bit more durable, and it's going to manage moisture, i.e. dry yep. really quick or pull that moisture off your skin. Wool is going to be a little more expensive, maybe a little less durable. Some people just love it, but it's going to take a little longer to dry. Mm -hmm. And so, whereas I can almost feel in cold weather a synthetic base layer pulling the moisture off my skin, where you almost tend to think you're cooling down, mm -hmm. wool tends to steam itself dry. That's not a, a, a feeling I particularly care for. Okay. So again, you can't make a mistake as long as you don't use cotton in the base layer. Other okay. than that, it's completely up to the individual. Okay, and when you say base layer, briefs, top, and sometimes, Correct, long bottom. So weather like today, I'm gonna bring, you know, I really enjoy a lightweight top with a hood mm -hmm. because that gives me some sun protection. Yep. It breaks up my outline if I use camo and a pair of boxers. Now, okay. if you and I are gonna go on that elk hunt out of state and we're gonna go for a week and it's not gonna be for a day or I check the weather forecast and today and tonight are gonna be okay, I'm gonna probably carry the bottoms okay. because Western weather in the mountains here is very dynamic. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you could go to bed in, in the heat and wake up and all of a sudden it's 25 degrees, 25 yeah. degrees with snow on the ground, yeah. right? But I'm not necessarily, just because I, I quote pack all this stuff, I'm not gonna necessarily wear it all the time. Mm -hmm. It just gives me the ability to adapt to that changing weather. Okay. Yep. So first base layer. Base layer, top and bottom, that's pieces one and two. Okay. And whether synthetic or, or merino or wool, merino, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Literally personal choice. All right. Yep. Well, we got two of them out of the way, right? right, right exactly. Right no, it, it goes pretty quick. So the next one is, you know, one people tend to focus on as they should, but it's a pair of soft shell hunting pants. I'll call them yep. soft shell hunting pants. So it's yep. not Gore-Tex pants. It's not, not insulated. It's just a pair of soft shell hunting pants. Yep. Polyester nylon doesn't really matter. This is a, um, a layer or a piece where there's lots and lots of choices, yep. lots of bells and whistles, right. knee pads, no knee pads, hip vents, whatever the case may yep. be, camouflage, solid, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Um, but this is really meant to be your armor from the elements, I say. So okay. we put these pants on, we start walking through some buck brush or something to get up into the alpine. If we don't have those pants on, it's going to shred us, right. right? So we want it to be durable. I want this to dry quickly. If I happen to cross a creek and, you know, slip off the rock or the, or the log and go into my knee, yep. you know, I want it to dry relatively quickly. Um, but really the soft shell honey pants is something that I tend to put on and I generally don't take them I, off. I'm the same way. Right. I, so, um, so I want them to be durable, but I want them to have a little bit of performance, but yeah. so many options here can't even begin to, to talk about yeah. them. Right. And, uh, every company makes multiple soft shell pants, like you guys, you could go with the really lightweight, warm weather stuff. The Ascent, the Intercept, Traverse, any, anything all, like all that. To, <clears throat> my elk hunting uniform is my Timberline. Right. So there's no right or wrong, it's just what are the conditions, because this serves the purpose of what you said. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great, um, this is a great piece to kind of talk about this. People say, well, you, you know, you own, you know, you own 40 pieces of clothing. And you're like, you're right. Because I may own three or four different uh, pairs of soft shell pants to serve different purposes. Right. 
but I'm only taking one in the field. And when people say, I don't know where to start my life with technical hunting clothing, I'm like, buy a pair of soft shell pants and just pick one. Yeah. And then as you begin to push maybe to the periphery of early season and maybe later rifle seasons, yeah, you may choose to buy a different pair of pants to serve your purpose or you didn't buy one with knee pads and now you want that, that's fine. Yeah. But you only need to bring that one pair. Yep. And so just pick one, start there, and then you can, you know, we all love gear. Yeah. So we all want to have options <laughs> over the over the years. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. We got so that's item number that's three. Piece three. Okay. Yep. Piece. Now, piece four is a little bit, piece four is the one that this is near and dear to my heart. And this is probably something that people don't often think about. Um, it may be the piece that, that folks choose maybe not to bring, but it's a some type of wind stopper or wind blocking top, mm -hmm. right? So it could be, you know, a gore wind stopper jacket like this Mountain Evo, or it could be something as simple as a, a wind shirt, right? That weighs a couple ounces and it balls up and you stick it right. in your pocket. But yep. what's most important to understand about the wind layer and why I think it's so critical is because we're standing here, if, if we hike to the top of the ridge, we're chasing the sunrise to, to glass those muleys, right? Before they go into their beds and yep. we want to identify them. And we're gonna move fast and so we're gonna sweat more than maybe we wanted to. Yep. And then we're gonna get up on that ridge and inevitably those ridges are cool. Yeah. And, there's, <laughs> the and they're blowing. windy. Yeah. And so if wind now is blowing across our bodies, I just talked about how we radiate heat. I talked about how moisture evaporates and takes away heat. If we now have wind blowing across our body, we're gonna lose heat exponentially quicker through convective cooling. Right. And so oftentimes just being able to put something on to block the wind is, gonna, is just gonna warm you up, right? But it's not gonna do it at the penalty of any kind of bulk. Right. So wind stopper jackets, I'll get the question, hey, well, can I, I'm an ounce counter, can I wear a Gore-Tex jacket instead of a wind stopper jacket? Yes, you can, but oftentimes these jackets or these wind shirts are super lightweight, um, less expensive than most rain gear, um, quiet for close in archery type hunting. You know, people ask me, well, if I'm gonna go to say, British Columbia and, and archery hunt um, uh, mountain goats, yeah. and it's, you know, a little rainy, which it often is, or a little snowy, like how do you get in close to get an archery shot, say within, you know, 30, 40 yards wearing rain gear? And I said, yeah. well, I don't, <laughs> I wear wind stopper because it's it's wind resistant and it's water resistant and it's long it'll be good enough long enough to hopefully get that shot so yeah. this is something that's that's a little different that you know people may choose um you know maybe it doesn't fit their style i think the jet stream jacket is a very popular jacket yep. that, that you like to wear later season right yep. I, I do as well but that wind stopper layer it's important to just understand what it does, what purpose it serves, and then people can choose how to solve that problem of convective cooling. Yeah. Well, the, the other part of this, just because it's part of your eight pieces, doesn't mean you wear every piece of this Correct. all day long. Correct. Like that is probably going to be in my pack when I leave the truck in the morning. Because yep. I'm going to be active. I'm getting up to exactly. the line or I'm chasing a bugle well, or whatever. Well, especially this time of year. But yeah. come November, you may, you may have that on your body, right? Right. right. So, yep. So the idea is when you're making your decision, you have these with you, but it doesn't mean you gotta wear everyone. Correct, you, you're gonna build a quiver and then you're gonna, you're gonna pull the arrow out of your quiver, or the piece out of your quiver, or pieces to mix and match to meet the demands of the weather. Yeah. Yep. So there we are, we got four. So that's four, right. right. So the next one is maybe again a little, maybe my nomenclature is a little different than, than some people are aware, but. Um, there's two types of insulation, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so one is static insulation that I'll talk about where we stand around and we're not generating a lot of body heat. And the other is active insulation. So active insulation at its simplest form is like a mid or heavyweight fleece. Mm -hmm. So everybody's very familiar with like a grid fleece. Yep. Um, there's also some hybrid garments on the market now, like this ambient, but they serve the same purpose, which is we get up in the morning, there's frost on the ground, we're gonna to go to the top of that ridge. So it's cold, we don't wanna um, you know, move super quick because maybe we don't wanna you know, bump any deer or anything. But we know we need to put something on our body to keep us warm because we're not gonna be able to move quick enough to, to right. create enough body heat. But we also don't wanna sweat. Yeah. So active insulation provides just enough warmth while you're moving. 
which is means it's highly breathable. Yeah. So it's going to manage that body heat, but it's going to dump that heat as well. So it's going to be a synthetic, most likely. Most likely, hybrid. yeah. Um, almost all of these now are are synthetic. Yeah. So, like I said, heavyweight fleece is maybe the best um, the the best one to talk about because people understand it. But you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna have that grid fleece on. And I'm going to move and it's like, man, if I slow down, I'm going to be cold. But if I keep moving, but guess what? I'm not sweating to death and dehydrating myself because the, the heat's just dumping. Right. It's a better option than taking your puffy or something else while you're moving. Exactly. And really overheating. Yeah. Well, and, we'll, and we'll talk about that because this is meant for movement. A puffy jacket is not. Right. Yeah. So what is that? Piece five Piece is active five. insulation. Yeah. So piece six now which is what I call static insulation or what we, you know, commonly refer to as puffy jackets. Yeah. And that puffy, that, that term really tells the intent of the jacket, which is that loft or that puffiness created by either down or synthetic traps our body heat when we're not moving. So now we get to the top of the ridge, we've sweated up, we put on that windstopper jacket, because we need that, right? Because it's really cold and really windy, but we're standing around glassing or we're sitting down glass and we're like, you know what? That's not enough insulation. I need more. Yeah. So now what I want to do is I want to be very stingy with my body heat when I'm in the mountains, because just like fuel in your truck, body heat is really a limited commodity. Right. How do you, you know, what's, what's the fuel for our bodies? It's food and water, which is a finite resource. We can only carry so much. Yeah. So when we sit down and we put this puffy jacket on, which is intended in size to go over everything, you don't take anything off to put it on. You put it on, you pull the hood up, and now as that heat radiates away from our body, it gets trapped in all that loft from the down or the synthetic. And the face of this jacket, any of them, is a very tight knit. So the intent is it's not gonna let it just blow right through like an active insulation. Yep it's going to keep it in there. And then slowly over time, it'll work its way through. But hopefully our body can also generate heat in, you know, either in camp or on the ridge or, you know, maybe even in our tent playing cards or whatever the case may be. Um, this static puffy jacket is the first layer I've talked about here. I consider this part of my survival system. Okay. <clears throat> what I mean by that is- Even in warm weather. It doesn't matter if I'm going out for the day, doesn't matter if I'm going out for a week or a month. It doesn't matter if we're going out, you know, in beginning of September or December, I will have some type of puffy jacket. Now, if I'm going to go chase antelope, I may choose to take, uh, you know, a grid fleece active insulation piece for those cool mornings or evenings. And instead of bringing a full puffy, maybe I'm going to bring a static insulated vest, okay. right? Or maybe a, a really yeah. thin um, uh, puffy jacket. But yeah. Again, what, what problem is the product trying to solve and I'm trying to build into my system is I want insulation when I'm moving and I want insulation when I'm stopped. And they don't do the same thing. And if I tried to stalk an animal with a bow in a puffy jacket, it's not gonna be durable, it's gonna be super loud, yep. it's gonna create bow string clearance, all kinds of issues. Because yep. it's not intended for that. It's really just intended to when we're stopped, when we're static, trap our body heat and be very stingy about giving it away. And again, this doesn't necessarily have to be worn all the time. No. And like you said, no. you're not going to leave the truck with this on your body. No, this is not intended to be to, to hike in. People say, well, geez, you know, the puffy jacket, the static puffy jacket doesn't breathe and this, and I'm like, it's not intended to. Right. It's got a job to play. It's a very critical job. That rides in the top of my pack, just under the top lid. If, you know, we stop to eat, or rest or glass or look at the map or whatever and it's cold out, I put that on, goes over top of everything, I trap that body heat, it's gonna, believe it or not, start to dry out some of your clothing, especially your base layer, and then we get ready to move, take it off, put it in there, we move, Again. generate body heat, I don't need this now. Now this is kind of my safety blanket. No it, that's exactly what, what it is. I find myself in, if this is in my pack, I'm gonna make it. Yeah, so if you and I are, are hunting elk, we kill a bull, you kill a bull right at dark. We process that bull. We really want to get back to camp. You know, we, our, our chow's back there, <laughs> our, our nice ground pad and sleeping bags are back there. And so we're not super familiar with the area or we're going to take maybe a shortcut. Yeah. 
Yeah. And all of a sudden we find ourselves in a cliff band at night. Yeah. And the best course of action is to just sit down, talk to each other, yeah. maybe catch some rest, have a great story to tell tomorrow, but not push our way down through that cliff band. But all of a sudden, if I don't have a puffy jacket, if I don't have the ability to stay warm, guess what? We may panic. At a minimum, we're going to start making a, potentially a series of poor decisions. You know what? We can make it. Let's yeah. just push down through there because it's yeah. really cold and I'm going to shiver and I don't really like being cold. Yep. And all of a sudden, bad things can happen. Yeah. So this is why I say this is a critical piece. And when you, when you talk to search and rescue groups and you teach them and you listen to, you know, kind of the commonalities of the calls they receive, it's because people are out in the elements and they're, um, they're calling because of exposure, mm -hmm. right? And you and I talked about the late, like, uh, well, opening day of rifle last year. Yeah. But, you know, if people aren't prepared, yeah. I, you know, you, rightly so, they begin to panic. But if they have these things, it's like, well, you know what, Randy, we're going to be a little uncomfortable, but we're going to have a great story to tell. We'll, we'll you know, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll have bragging rights on our buddies, but we're not going to die. Yeah. We're not going to get hypothermia. And that's what a static puffy layer does. That's why I think it's so critical. Now, if we're going to go out and you know, like you weren't up to um, Northwest Territories or, you know, I'm above the Arctic Circle chasing sheep or caribou um, in Alaska. I may choose to actually bring a pair of uh, puffy pants as well, mm -hmm. but that's, that, that's the fringes, yeah. right? But You're predominantly good. just the jacket is what people need. Yeah. It's really difficult sometimes when people are packing in their barn, right, in their garage for a hunt, say, in another state or, you know, if, again, I'll use Ohio, but if I'm at Ohio at 300 feet of elevation, and I'm gonna go drive to Colorado and hunt at 8,500 feet, it's going to be different weather. And so it's hard to say, well, I really need this insulated jacket in early September, but when you get up there and you have snow on the ground the first day of September, I mean, it'll snow any day in the mountains, yeah. right? That, that's all of a sudden where people go, man, I just wasted vacation days, time away from family, gas money, all this stuff, because I wasn't prepared. And it's just an unforced error but this system is going to get the vast majority of us through our year, mm -hmm. no matter what we're doing um, in North America. Yeah. Yeah. So that's six. layer, that's that piece six. That was six. That's six. What are seven and eight? So seven and eight are rain jacket and pant. Okay. Right here. Right there. So interestingly enough, here's how I describe rain gear. Okay. I describe rain gear like car insurance. Okay, you, you want the best that you can get, but you but never you want to use, use it. it. You hope you don't lose that back. You never want to use it, but when you do, you're glad you paid for the best you can afford, yeah. right? But I understand that people, you know, if I'm living in Arizona, we live in Montana, maybe I'm not going to use rain gear a lot. Right. So my choice of rain gear may be different. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to go out for the day and I know the, the weather forecast is good, you know, Maybe I'm a couple miles from a truck. Maybe I'll choose not to bring the pants or maybe I'll just bring the jacket, right? Or maybe I'll just leave it at home. But my point is the only thing that's gonna keep the human dry in torrential rain is rain gear. It's kind of a one trick pony. Yeah, it'll block some wind, but that's also, interestingly enough, the one layer in all this that's the most expensive, probably the least durable, not that it's not durable, but the least durable, and takes the most care to continue to keep that investment performing year after year after year. Yeah. So I wanna take that rain gear, I wanna put it in the bottom of my pack. I wanna pray I never get to use it. <laughs> but when I need it, it's there, right? And so I haven't torn it up, um, you know, randomly climbing over a bunch of blowdown when it was just windy out, right? I yeah. save it for that. Now, you and I have been to lots of areas in the north <laughs> and even in Montana where you know, you go out and you're wearing rain gear every day of the yeah. trip. I know we have guide friends, they'll yeah. wear it, you know, it seems seemingly three months straight, yeah. right? Um, but most of us just want that insurance policy, that car insurance to ride in the bottom of the pack. That is the jacket and the pant are the second layer that I consider my survival system. Okay. The human being, and I'll speak for myself here, I can't speak for every human being, but I would guess the vast majority of us don't like to be cold or wet. So if I can keep myself warm and dry on a hunt, on an overnight, some unplanned contingency, I'm gonna be able to stay in the field. And if we can stay in the field, we're gonna give ourselves the, uh, uh, the best chance of success because yep. you can't kill them from the couch.
Yep. And if we can weather out that storm, again, that we talked, it's gonna push others off the mountain and, and leave those elk for us. But ring gear and that static puffy are those two pieces that are going to allow you know, us to have that performance in our system. And so, as you mentioned, I'm gonna probably, you know, I'm gonna have my base layer on, I'm have my soft shell pants on, depending on the weather, I may have a static, or sorry, an active insulation piece, and maybe, you know, depending on the, the time of year, a windstopper layer. But really, the puffy and the rain gear is almost always gonna ride in your pack until yeah. you're stationary, right? Or until the weather really starts to deteriorate. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, we've taken a lot of time in discussing, discussing this, John, but I think in the world we operate in, people get a little, you know, what do they call it? Analysis paralysis? Yeah. That there's just well, there's so a, many options. There's a lot and, of choices. There's a lot of options out there now. And yeah. then people might with budget say, I need one piece that does it all. There is not one piece out there that does it all. No. So even whatever your budget is, start with that system and know that over time, if you invest properly for the right category of what you need, you're gonna have a great system that'll get you through everything. Yeah, I just posted my, well, I posted my antelope gear list. I tend to post my gear list on the website and on Instagram. And that website is knowledgefromstorms.com. Knowledge. Um, but, you know, I, so I posted my, my elk gear list, I think last week and you know, some people reached out, but one guy particularly says, hey, can you give me some options? Like, I don't know if the intercept pant, it's a new pant. I don't know if the intercept pant's the right pant for me. I don't know if it's got enough versatility. And I'm like, I'll give you lots of options. But what I want that person to take away is not the exact style or brand of pant, but that you need a soft shell pant or that right. you need a puffy jacket, right? That's really more important is understanding the why behind each piece and the purpose it serves within a system and what performance it gives you. And then, yeah, I don't mind answering the question, but at the end of the day, we all have, um, you know, different budgets and we align with different brands or we hunt different ways or different areas. And it's like, but if you understand the principles, you can literally apply them in anything you go and do outdoors to include walk the dog for, you yeah. know, three hours in yeah. the mountains. It, it all applies. Yeah. And that's the purpose of this is to, let people break it down into something that's really understandable show that everything has its purpose you don't need one of everything that a, a company might sell no you need the things that work for you and then understand the role they play and your conditions activity level and you'll be more comfortable you'll be safe and you'll be successful out in the field absolutely likely. to me it's all about being safe and trying to find more success yeah well, thanks, John. Yeah. I appreciate it. This yeah. is, no, it's fun I, talking I hope about. people get out of this what I've got. And you and I being longtime friends, uh, I just, people can benefit from what John Barclow uh, has. And I've been the beneficiary of a lot of that. And I thank you. Yeah. And, well, like uh, I said, I appreciate, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. So, well, there you go, folks. Everything you need, no matter what you're hunting, no matter your activity level, no matter the conditions, just think about it by the categories, eight different pieces that John talked about, know what they get used for, what conditions, and you're set to go. We'll put a ton of links down below where you can find all this stuff, where you can find John's website. Just think about it as being a simple solution to a complex problem, which usually doesn't happen. <laughs> not normally. You, you have done that, not John, normally. in your work. You've taken a complex problem and- It only took me 30 years. <laughs> and, well, I would say eight pieces is a simple solution. It is, but it took me 30 years to get to this conclusion. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, folks.